All right, just to go through the list. First thing you do, move C. Or set equal to zero. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Set equal to zero. Then you want to move C. And add blanks. Now you can put add blanks out here, or you can do number three, add blanks. It doesn't matter. Number four, this is where you need to make sure that, that A are the leading coefficient, which is the x squared term is equal to 1. If it's not, if the leading coefficient is not equal to 1, you have to factor out the common term. And when you factor out the common term, that means that you have to multiply the right hand blank by the factor, whatever you factor that out. And then once you do all of that, then you do completing the square. And completing the square consists of B divided by 2 squared and add, or just put it in those two blanks. I just put two blanks whatever you want to put there. Put in blanks. And then after that, number six, left hand side is shortcut number one, four, two, and then simplify the right hand side and then draw you two arrows and then find the vertex and solve. Now my whole purpose of doing completing the square, no matter what you get in your homework, you need to do it by completing the square. Just ignore the directions. I want you, if they give you a quadratic, a quadratic, I want you to do it completely in the square. I don't care if it says quadratic formula, I don't care if it says factor, I want you to do it completely in the square with every problem that you have as far as a quadratic. Now, that's what you're going to be testing on. I'll do one more for you, just to explain these two steps right here. And then we're going to move on to 4.4 or 3.4 or whatever chapter we're on. And yes, I skip 3.3. I mean, I don't think it's that important.
because it's on the right side. What are you going to factor out? A 2. So that would be 2 x squared minus 3 half x plus blank. What is that? things about completing the square is that it uses fractions. And why do you want to use fractions? Because you can multiply them easier than you can multiply decimals. If you do decimals, you have to start using the calculator. Unless you're just like gifted and you can multiply complex decimals in your head. I can that way. Now complete the square. Now I'm going to pull this out. There's my B. Three halves. Three halves divided by two and square. Now what is two over? Two over what? One. So I'm dividing a fraction by two over one so that means I multiply it by what? Two. So 3 over 2 times 1 over 2 and square it. Now pay attention here because I don't want you to mess this up because these are the two spots right here and right here that people screw it up. So 3 halves divided by 2 with completely square. And 2 over 1 multiplied by 1 half. And that gives you 3 fourths squared. And what's 3 fourths squared? 9 sixteenths, Hubert. That's right, class. From this step to this step, factor out leading coefficient. And from this step to this step, 
completing the square is the two most prone areas that people make mistakes. And the reason they make mistakes is not because of the math. They make mistakes because they don't know what to do first. So that's why I give you that list to go by. And you do factor out the leading coefficient first. And there's the leading coefficient. So you got to make it one. This right here has to be one right there in order for you to complete the square with this trinomial. And that's going to give you shortcut number three, I'm sorry, number two right here. So that would be two times x minus three-fourths quantity squared is equal to, and this 2 will cancel out with the 16, 8 times, that would be 9 eighths. And then what's 8 times 7? 58? Or 56? What is it, 56? I'm not good with 8 at all. 56? And that's a plus. And we'll carry that over to the next page. And if you wonder where I got this guy, right here, 2 over 1 times 9 16. That 2 will cancel with that 16 8 times. And then 9 eighths. That's where I got that. So you need to take your highlighter, take your highlighter, and that's where that comes from. Put it on this. And now we two times X minus three-fourths quantity squared is equal to, what's 56 plus 9? 65? Now people, you don't need, you don't need to take the square root of 65 in your calculator. Why? I mean, when you do it, because the square root of 64 is what? So what's the square root of 65? 8.1. Go ahead and get that, because I know some of y'all probably reached for the calculator when you saw that 65. All right, so two arrows. Your vertex is what? is equal to 2 times x minus 3 fourths quantity squared minus 65 eighths. And that is just another way of putting vertex and I've tried to show you all that as well as the 110 students. Um, sometimes they ask for vertex, sometimes they ask for this. And over here we're going to solve for x. I'm going to rewrite it. 2 times x minus 3 halves, or 3 fourths, quantity squared is equal to 65 over 
Eight. Divide by two. If I divide by two, what do I multiply by? One half. And that's going to give me x minus three fourths quantity squared is equal to sixty five over what? Sixteen. And I'll finish it out. What's a good indicator here that you're doing something right? Well, if I take the square root of the right side, what do I get? Eight point one over four, and what's the denominator on the other side? That's a good indicator. Because usually, if you either are taking the perfect root here, or if it's the same as that after you take the square root, that means pretty much that this problem is designed to come out nice and simple. Unlike some of the ones that I come up with that aren't. And you have different denominators. And there's nothing to do about that. But some problems are designed to do by completing the square, some are not. So, x minus 3 fourths is equal to 8.1 positive or negative over 4 and then bring the 3 over it's equal to plus 3 and there is your answer. Now, there's two ways to write the answer. And I'm just going to take it over to the next screen. This is your approximate. So I'm going to go to the next screen. Positive or negative, 8.1 plus 3 over 4. This is the approximate. A, P, P. Did I show you all approximate versus perfect or exact? Okay, well, I'm just going to remind y'all. Exact would be the square root of, what was it, 65? Plus three over four. Or they might write it like this in the homework or test. Uh, positive square root of 65 plus three over four, comma, negative square root of 65 plus three over four. And then we'll put it in spaces or something like that. So this is your answer. Or this is your answer in the exact form. Exact means that you leave the radical in the answer. And then over here, what's eight dollars and ten cents plus three dollars? Eleven dollars and one and ten cent and what's half of eleven dollars? Be five fifty five? And 555, oh, that's a half, I'm sorry. I was divided by four. I'm sorry about that. What? You could do 555 divided by two. Yeah, divide that by two, yeah. Thank you. 555, that'd be 230 or 227 or something. I don't know. What is it? What? 275, that's good, yeah. 2.75. I'm trying to do it in my head. I'm sorry. 
And what's negative 8.1 plus $3? You owe $8.10. You have three. You still owe $5.10. So four will go in there one time. I forgot what I said. Oh, four dollars and ten. I mean, uh, five dollars and ten cents. That'll leave ten two times, and what? One point two. What? Seven. So now you got enough. What was the y-intercept? Somebody help me out there. Negative seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And my vertex, what was it? Three, one, two, three. Can't be the same. It can't be negative seven. Can't be the same as the. Uh, That's not seven. What is that? Huh? Oh, six five eight. Yeah, it's eight and one eighth, isn't it? Okay, it can't be the same as your vertex unless they're, I mean, on your y intercept unless it's sitting on the y axis. All right, so negative, you said it's what, three and negative what? I think it was three fourths and then negative. Oh, three fourths. Negative eight point or something right there. And don't worry about if you plot it right, because if you don't plot it right, you don't know. Or if you've got an error somewhere, you're going to know because it's not going to plot right. And two point seven five one two seven five is right there, and negative one point two seven. So it looks halfway decent. Why is it skinny? Of the and you feel good about yourself. All real numbers, negative 8.18 or 8.18 to infinity is your range. Decreasing from negative infinity to three quarters. Increasing from three quarters to positive infinity. What have you noticed about doing complete and square over and over and over? But I know we've done at least three, I know we've done at least 10 to 15 problems in class. What have you noticed? Nothing? You don't notice anything? A lot of improvements. I think he's looking for it to get easier. Yes, it <laughs> should be getting easier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it should be getting easier. What have you noticed about seeing domain and range and everything? What have you noticed about getting your domain and range increasing and decreasing? You can see it. Uh, you can see it now better than when you first started. It's just like playing a musical instrument. The more you do, the better you get. This is our final answer. I mean, that's what the graph looks like. Okay, now I'm going to move to 3.4 today. I'm not going to do 3.3 because 3.4 to me is more important. So, and that's where we make a quadratic out of three points. So I'm going to put three points on the board. write it right here while he's finishing up writing that. I got three points. Hmm? You got it? You mean the graph or 
I mean, write whatever's on this page. You have them let you catch up. Still haven't found my keys. All right, I'll write these down. Uh, zero five four thirteen and negative two twenty five. Write those down. Zero five four thirteen and negative two twenty five. Zero five. 413 and negative 2, comma 25. You're going to have to tell me if I forget them, which I don't have any short term memory, so. 05 413, negative 225. Yeah, I agree. 0. Don't forget it, I can tell. It's going. Zero, five, four, thirteen, and negative two, twenty-five. Can't believe I remember that. All right, now there's two or three ways to solve this one. I'm going to show you one way. One way is to, of course, write y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And plug and chug for each one of them. And there's two ways to do it. Now, first I'm going to take the 0 and the 5. I'm just going to take it. And I'm going to plug in for what? I've got to find C too. How am I going to find C? Well, C is going to be your uh, Y intercept. So you already know what is this? No, zero five. What is that? Yeah, but what is this? It's the Y intercept. It's the Y intercept. So you already know that's going to be five. Okay, you know that because this is the Y intercept. Okay, so you know, are they going to give you the y intercept all the time? No, and that's why you have to do a different way. So you already know that's the y intercept, so plug 5 in for c, not because of x and y, but because of c, and plug in y for uh, x and y, or 5 in for y and x in for, and you should be able to solve for a. So take, there's 5. Plug it in right here. Is equal to a times zero squared plus b times zero plus Now, fortunately, what happens to the B term? It's eliminated, and that's what you want because you would have two unknowns in one equation and you couldn't solve it. So, 5 is equal to, well, the 0 also cancels out the A. That's not good. Well, you can find C. C is equal to 5, and we already knew that. So go ahead and plug that in. So these terms go out, and you get 5 is equal to C. 5 is equal to 5, so C is equal to 5. You can get C from that. So now we've got C is equal to 5. And now we can take one of the other ones and see what we can plug in there. So go ahead and plug in the other one. 
or plug in whichever point you want. I don't think this thing is working. These three points are part of the same line. Yes, they're for they're a parabola. Remember to use your C. You need to use it when you plug in too. Okay, so we found C is equal to 5, and we put it right here. Now I'm going to utilize these two points right here. I'm going to go back to my Y is equal to AX squared plus BX plus C, and I'm going to set up two of them. There's one. There's two. And I'm going to plug in this one and that over here, this one and that over here. So 13 is equal to A times 4 squared plus B times 4 plus 5. And then over here, it's going to be 25 is equal to A times negative 2 squared plus B times negative 2 plus 5. I saw those two. And you should be able to solve them because they're about three algebra algebra one. Just condensed. Now you're not going to get you're not going to get a number is equal to a letter. You're going to get solving systems of equations. You're going to have two equations, two unknowns, and we did that in the last unit. should. Thirteen is equal to, what is that, sixteen A plus four B. And what can I do with that five? Bring it over here. What's thirteen minus five? Eight. Eight is equal to sixteen A plus 4B. And I'm just going to put a rectangle around that because that's as far as I can go there. And then over here, I get 25 is equal to 4A minus 2B plus 5. 
And what's 25 minus 5? 20 is equal to 4A minus 2B. And now you have two equations and what? Two unknowns, so now you use solving systems of equations. And I don't care which method you use. You can use graphing, which is you know, the most unreliable, or you can use substitution and elimination. Let's see what we come up with. A equals 16A plus 4B and 20 is equal to 4A minus 2B. I'm going to use elimination, but which one am I going to get rid of? The B's. Yep, the B's. Why? Opposite signs. So I'm going to multiply the bottom by what? 2. And I'm going to get the, the, the top one doesn't change. So that's 8 is equal to 16A plus 4B. And the bottom turns into 40 equals 8A minus what? And what happens to the B's? They go out, and you're left with 16 plus 8 is 24, is equal to what? 48. So A is equal to what? 2. Now you can take A is equal to 2 and do what? Back substitute. to 16 times 2 plus 4B and 16 times 2 is what? 32 minus 32 8 minus 32 is I have 24 negative 24 is equal to 4B B is equal to what? negative 6 so I think we've got all we need, don't we? We've got A, B, and C, don't we? So let's go back to our equation. We've got 
A is equal to 2, B is equal to negative 6. So, let me just rewrite it right here. A x squared plus B x plus C. And what was A? 2 x squared plus or B minus minus 2x, or what was it, 2, what was it, 6? Six? 6x six plus what? And that is your equation for your parabola that goes through those three points. Isn't that nice? That's our answer. Yeah. Now how could you check it? Do complete the square and see what vertex you get or see what y intercept you get or you do it on the calculator. Whichever one you want. Now, that was given. What was given that may not be given next time? The y intercept. So that's the difference. The next one I give you may not have that. Uh oh, I haven't even looked at it. Now you'll have probably one or two of each of these on the test, along with the 50,000 completing squares. Alright? Yeah, this one don't have an X or Y intercept. This one is negative one, nine, two, six, and three, thirteen. Negative one, nine, two, six, and three, thirteen. Cox is not here today, is he? Now this one, since you don't have the y-intercept, you might have to set it up three equations, three what? Unknowns. The 
what's my numbers? I didn't memorize them this time. Um, negative what and nine. Hold on. Negative one and nine? Yeah. Two and six. Three and thirteen. And they do not have the y-intercept or the x-intercept, so we can't use the previous method. So y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Mm -hmm. And plug in what you have. So 9 is equal to negative or a times negative 1 plus b times negative 1 plus c. 6 is equal to a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c and 13 is equal to a times 3 squared plus b times 3 plus c. And let's clean those up. So this one turns into a or 9 is equal to what? 1a or a. 9 is equal to a minus what? Minus b plus c. 6 is equal to 4a plus 2b plus c. And 13 is equal to 9a plus 3b plus c. And I'm going to copy that and put it on the next page. And then we're going to have to solve a 3 by 3. Well, when you solve a three by three or three equations, three unknown, I tell students to pick one and two and one and three. And that's why you don't have to you can pick two and one, two and three. You can pick three and two, three and one. Doesn't matter. So here's nine is equal to a minus b plus c. And 6 is equal to 4a plus 2b plus c. And then over here, 1 and 3. 9 is equal to a minus b plus c. And 13 is equal to 9a plus 3b plus c. Now, which one are you going to solve for? Or which one are you going to eliminate? Which one do you think I'm going to eliminate? B. Now, whatever you decide to take out here, you have to what? You have to take out there. You can't take out B on one side and C on the other. So if you decide to take out B here, you got to take out B here no matter what it takes. So go ahead and do that.
What are you going to multiply the top by? Two. And what are you going to multiply the top by over here? Yeah. Two times nine is eighteen. Two a negative two b and two c. Three times nine is twenty-seven. Three a minus three b plus three c. And what's 18 plus 6? 4a, uh, 4a plus 2a. That goes out. 1c plus 2c. Thirteen plus twenty-seven. Twelve A plus four C. Now what do we have? Two equations and what? Two unknowns. Now you can solve for one of those. And then those start back substitute. Do it again with these two. Mm -hmm. one you think I'm going to get rid of? Why? Because you only need to multiply one of them. Good. Does it matter which one you get rid of? No, but it's easier to get rid of the A because you have to multiply by two factors here to get 12 to eliminate here. So that's why I say, you know, keep it simple. Try to go with the least amount of work. So I'm going to multiply the top by what? A negative 2. Negative 2 times 24 is negative 48. Negative 2 times 6 is negative 12a. And negative 2 times 3 is what? And the a's go out. 40 minus 48 is negative 8. And 4 minus 6 is negative what? So what is C? Four. And now we take that 4 and do what? Back substitute. And I'm going to plug it into the 24, 6A, and 3C. 24 is equal to 6A plus 3 times 4 and 12 is equal to 6a. a is equal to what? So now you've got a and c. So let's take it to one of the previous problems. I meant one of the previous right here. You can put it in that one or put it in the original. I don't care. Uh, there's the original, so we're going to use that one. And the reason I'm going to use this one over the other one is why? Small what? Small numbers. In other words, there's no coefficients. These got coefficients. You got to multiply and do all that. These you just have the ones in front of everything. Again, you can use any, but keep it simple. So I'm going to take my handy dandy clipboard and go here and it didn't put it. Right.
Okay, there he is. I don't know. There. Sorry. Um, on medication, I guess. Nine is equal to two minus b plus four. And two plus four is six, so b is equal to negative three. Y'all check me. So now we can plug and chug into our ax squared plus bx plus c. 2x squared plus, oh sorry, minus, minus 3x plus what? Plus what? Fish. A lot of brain work, isn't it? You'll have one of each of those on the test. I'm looking for something that... Let's go back to, I thought the rest of it was just a lot of applications and that's what it is. All right, look at this question. It says, show the dollar, show the dollar value or projected dollar value for 2006 to 2012 or mobile internet advertising market for the years from 2006 to 2012. Okay, that's what the table shows. It says create a scatter plot, find the quadratic function that is best fit for the data, and then graph the aligned data and the model on the same axis. Does this model seem to be a reasonable fit? So go ahead and create a scatter plot on your calculator. X is equal to the number of years after what? 2000. Or right, you can do it on the Excel spreadsheet if you want to. And then they want you to find the function for the best fit. Why are women so weird? Why is that? Y'all not weird, right? 
Somebody once asked me the best explanation for the difference between a man and a woman. And you know what I told them? This is what I told them. I put it on Facebook, but I'm not on Facebook anymore, so I'll pull it up on Google. My definition of a man is it takes me a while to find it because it's not on here I don't see it this shows hold on let me, let me type it back in I must not have typed it in correctly Here's an example. You can use that right there. That's an example of a man right there. Alright? You got it? Alright, here's an example of a woman. I'd spelled Mustang wrong, didn't I? Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, Mustang, that's not right. And hairness, <laughs> I don't know what a hairness is. Sorry. Well, they must have took that off. How come things change on the internet so quick? Hold on, you will show it to you in a minute. Just, just, just. Well, yep, they changed it, so I gotta pull up something else. Let me pull up dashboard. Dashboard wiring harness. You ever taken your dashboard out of your car? Okay, y'all don't speak. Is that what it is? You don't speak at all. You just go through the day and not talk. Mr. Green, have you ever taken out your wiring harness out of your car? Yes. And what? Why? Why did you do it? Uh, I had a fire in my dad. And what was the problem? <laughs> okay. Well, evidently they took it off. There used to be a nice picture of a wiring harness on a, a dashboard of a car, and it was my picture that I explained to women because it was a good close up of the wiring harness. And I can't find it, but. Um, can't go there, that's not enough. But that's a woman right there. You got wires going into other wires. You got wires that are just dangling that doesn't have a end. You got wires going to nowhere. And a lot of women say, well, that's sexist. No, women are more complicated than men. Much more complicated. Men. You can predict men. Women, you don't know what's going to show up. You don't agree with me? You don't know? How about you? You agree? It's true. Why did I bring that up? I... 
I stay in the doghouse, okay? Let me just put it to you that way. No matter how much I try, I stay in the doghouse. And sometimes I think I just need to just, just sit and be quiet. And just don't say a word. Because, guys, none of y'all married, right? Are any of y'all married? Guys, take my word for it. There are some days it's best that you just don't say a word because you might hit one of these wires that goes straight to the battery and sparks everywhere and, you, and your dashboard catch on fire. What kind of car was it? Oh my. Oh, oh it wasn't a tank? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, that wasn't too bad because most of the dashboard is easy to get to. Yeah, they're pretty easy to spread most. I pulled mine out of an F-250. Uh, I'll never do that again. I like to have never got that thing back on because all the wires, it just, it was like a, it was like a, a, a popcorn kernel. Mm -hmm. When I took it off, it, the wires just went no, and, and I And I started getting duct tape and I started wrapping it in duct tape and, Pushing it in. It's awful. Okay, I'll shut up. You ain't going to talk to me. So. I don't know what's gotten into me. All right, scatter plot. So you take your handy dandy uh, calculator, and if you don't use a calculator, you can use the Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to use the Excel spreadsheet just because it's easier for y'all to see. And. I got to make it small where I can see the. All right, six since 2000, right? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And move it over a little bit. There we go. Point zero four five. Point one one four, point two seven three, point four oh nine, as in the cleaner. That reminds me, I gotta get some cleaner today. Point five four five, and cat food. Point seven nine one, dang old cat starving, dang old, had to give him milk this morning. One point zero two three, dang old half gallon of milk on the front porch. Wonder how they're gonna pick it up. <laughs> no. I poured a big old bowl of milk on the front porch for the cats. I got three. And I don't let them stay in the house during the day because they'll, I think they'll actually start a fire. I am serious. I got three most mis mischievous cats. They would break an amble with a banana. All right, now, what do you do to uh, do a scatter plot? Dang old highlight it. Dang old go to dang old insert. Dang old scatter plot somewhere. There it is. You pick whichever one you want. Is that what y'all's look like? Uh, you might have to do a uh, stat plot. Go to stat plot and L1, L2. It goes to L1, L2 automatically, so you don't have to type in L1, L2. Just hit enter or graph, and it should graph it, unless it asks you for what kind of graph you want, and then you gotta type in scatter plot. I'll help you. Let me go up here and I'll pull it up for you. I'm not used to questions. I, I don't know how to act. I don't know how to act. Miss Callahan is not going to talk to me anymore. I called her a wiring harness. Y'all, chill. What? Y'all, that like y'all want to leave. All right, stat. Hey, gum, I never met people who just hated the class. I, I try to make the class interesting. All right, edit. You're probably not the only one. All right. What do I go? Six, seven, eight, 
10, 11, and what? 12. And y'all gonna have to give me the other things because I can't remember those decimals. I ain't brain man. Alright, what's the first one? 045. What's the next one? 0.114. Next one. Next one. Next one. Next one. And one more. And once you type them in, you can go to stat plot, and that's uh, second function y is equal, and turn the plot on, hit enter, and hit enter for on, and go down and hit. Um, I guess you can do that scatter plot right there, and hit enter, and graph, and there it is. Just hit one of them. I'd go with the first one. Now you're going to have to zoom in, zoom box. Yeah. And then hit the scatter plot, and then hit graph. And that's what it looks like right there. i got to blow it up a little bit for y'all. There you go. That's what it looks like. So what does it look like? It looks like the right side of a parabola, doesn't it? Now, I don't know if this one will do it, but you can go to Calculate, go to Stat, Calculate, Linear Regression. I don't know, but you might be able to go... Go to Quartic or Quad, go to Quad 5, hit Enter, and I guess L1, L2 is defaulted. Look at there. Ain't that neat? And there's your A, B, and C. Quad red. Yep. That's what you did by hand, yes. Huh? I like that better. Yeah. <laughs> and y'all wonder why people can't make change. I lost. You lost? Where? I, I, I was graph Well, don't worry about the graph. I mean, go ahead and hit graph. Okay, what does it look like? That's it. All right, that's all you got to do. All right, now. Hit, hit, is it math? What did we hit? Stat or math? Stat, calculate five. And then hit enter. And there's your A, B, and C. What we calculated by hand. Alright? Okay, now that's chapter three. We're going to do chapter four next week and have you do unit two tests. We're going to spend a lot of time in and uh, chapter four because you can do most of it with the square. All right? Y'all get out of here. Have a good day. Don't run out of here too quick. I mean, I know y'all hate the class, but God. I don't like the class. It's just that I was kind of a headache and I, I guess I'm hoping. Well, you ought to be in the 110 class. They're in there whining because they don't, they don't like doing complete the squares. Uh, so. I don't know. I guess.